Before her death in 2011, Elizabeth Taylor was one of the last remnants of Hollywood's golden age. The actress was married eight times throughout her life to seven different men. Her spouses ranged from fellow golden age actor Richard Burton to alcoholic construction worker Larry Fortensky, whom she met at the Betty Ford Clinic during the 80s. In addition to her numerous spouses, she also hooked up with a good deal of other men. Join Facts First as we take a look at every man Elizabeth Taylor hooked up with. Robert Wagner. Early on in Elizabeth Taylor's Hollywood career, she hooked up with actor Robert Wagner. Robert is best known for performances in hit series like Heart to Heart and It Takes a Thief. Besides his work in entertainment, the thing Robert has arguably become best known for is the possibility he killed his late wife, Natalie Wood. Natalie Wood died under mysterious circumstances, and many people believe he's actually her killer. Thankfully, Elizabeth didn't share the same fate. Peter O'Toole. Though it isn't 100% certain, it seems likely that Elizabeth Taylor had an affair with British actor Peter O'Toole. The actor remains best known for his titular performance in the 1962 feature Lawrence of Arabia, for which he received an Academy Award nomination and immense acclaim from both critics and audiences. If Elizabeth and Peter had an affair, they kept it secret. Richard Long. In 1948, Elizabeth Taylor was spotted out on the town with actor Richard Long, who is known for his roles on various successful TV series on ABC. Marshall Thompson. Another figure Elizabeth Taylor was seen dating in 1948 was Marshall Thompson, an American actor. Glenn Davis. Before eventually getting married to her first husband in 1950, Elizabeth was engaged for some time to a professional football player named Glenn Davis. The two were engaged in the late 1940s, though they didn't end up tying the knot. Instead, Elizabeth continued dating around before eventually marrying first husband Conrad Hilton Jr. William Pauley. One of the men Elizabeth Taylor dated in between breaking off her engagement to Glenn Davis and marrying Conrad Hilton Jr. was actor William Pauley. Elizabeth and William dated sporadically from 1948 to 1950, the same year she married Conrad. Ronald Reagan. According to various sources, another person Elizabeth Taylor hooked up with before marrying her first husband was then-actor and future president Ronald Reagan. The two were said to have had a fling in 1949 when Ronald was still firmly placed in Hollywood. Robert Taylor. Perhaps bonding over the fact they shared a last name, Elizabeth Taylor hooked up with Robert Taylor, an actor whom she starred with in the feature Ivanhoe, released in 1952. Conrad Hilton Jr. In 1950, Elizabeth met and married Conrad Hilton Jr. Conrad was one of the sons of the founder of Hilton Hotels. The marriage was short-lived, with them divorcing only a year later. The wealthy socialite swept Elizabeth off her feet, but the young starlet proved too immature to truly settle down with a partner. Stanley Donan in 1951, after things fell through with first husband Conrad, Elizabeth moved on and was seen dating Hollywood filmmaker Stanley Donan. Stanley was a director and cinematographer. Some of his most prominent works include Singing in the Rain, Royal Wedding, Seven Brides for Seven Brothers, and Funny Face. Pat DiCicco. Another notable figure Elizabeth was spotted dating in 1951 was American film producer Pat DiCicco. Michael Wilding. After dating around for a few years, Elizabeth finally settled on a second husband, actor Michael Wilding. The two were married from 1952 to 57, making Elizabeth's second marriage a bit more successful than her first. Ralph Kiner. Sometime in the 1950s, Major League Baseball player Ralph Kiner escorted Elizabeth Taylor to a film premiere. Hey, if you're enjoying this video so far, be sure to give it a like and subscribe to Facts First if you haven't already. And stick around for more of Elizabeth Taylor's hookups. Mike Todd. In 1957, the same year she divorced second husband Michael Wilding, Elizabeth married another Michael. She had already begun drawing attention from tabloids for her variety of suitors, and it wasn't too surprising when she moved on so quickly after her second marriage. Sadly, her marriage to third husband Mike Todd ended too soon and tragically. Mike Todd was a film producer, best known for his work on the 1956 feature Around the World in 80 Days. Though Elizabeth's marriage to Mike didn't last very long, Elizabeth considered Mike the love of of her life all the way up until her 2011 death. Mike stands as the only one of her husbands she didn't divorce. Instead, he was taken from her by death. A year into their marriage, the film producer tragically passed away after crashing in his private plane. The private plane was named Lucky Liz's. Elizabeth was understandably devastated, and the death of her third husband left an impression on her forever. 
Arthur Lowe Jr. Mike Todd passed away in 1958, and newly widowed Elizabeth Taylor was seen fraternizing with film producer Arthur Lowe Jr. later that year. Arthur was a figure with a good deal of Hollywood pedigree in his blood, as one of his grandfathers had founded Paramount Pictures and the other had founded MGM. Sadly, Elizabeth and the film producer didn't find that they had much in common. Eddie Fisher. When Elizabeth Taylor first met baseball player Eddie Fisher, he was married to her friend Debbie Reynolds. Elizabeth ended up stealing him away from her, though that didn't seem to ruin the pair's friendship. Eddie became Elizabeth's fourth husband, with the two marrying in 1959 and staying married until 64. Richard Burton. On the set of the 1962 film Cleopatra, while Elizabeth was still married to Eddie Fisher, she started up an extramarital affair with actor Richard Burton. Richard was similarly married at the time, and they both subsequently talked their respective spouses into divorcing them so they could marry each other. Elizabeth and Richard married for the first time in 1964, divorced in 74, and then married once again in 75. Their second marriage didn't last nearly as long as the first, dissolving in 1976. The two were drunk through throughout the majority of the two marriages, constantly fought in public, and Richard later claimed he beat Elizabeth twice a year. Frank Sinatra in between her and Richard Burton's first and second marriages, Elizabeth apparently dated Frank Sinatra. Sinatra got around in his lifetime just about as much as Elizabeth did, and the two found they'd gotten everything they needed off of each other after being romantically involved for only a short period in 1974. Vic Damone Frank Sinatra wasn't the only singer Elizabeth Taylor dated in 1974. She was also seen getting together with Vic Damone during the time period. John Warner From 1976 to 82, Elizabeth Taylor was married to sixth husband John Warner. Halfway through their marriage, John became a senator. Elizabeth accompanied him throughout most of his campaign and reluctantly wore more conservative clothing in order to not catch the ire of John's Republican demographic. After John won his seat, Elizabeth found the politician no longer had enough time for her. She became depressed and gained so much weight she weighed nearly 200 pounds. She had always been a big partier, but she developed a startling reliance on painkillers during her marriage to John Warner that would see her later need to go to rehab, where she met her seventh and final husband. David Bowie in between her marriages to her sixth and seventh husbands, Elizabeth was apparently romantically involved with music legend David Bowie. Anthony Geary Anthony Geary is another man Elizabeth dated between her seventh and eighth marriages. The two began dating in 1982 and continued until 1984. Anthony is an actor best known for his role in General Hospital. George Hamilton In 1987, Elizabeth apparently dated esteemed character actor George Hamilton. Larry Fortensky. In the 80s, Elizabeth checked herself into the Betty Ford Clinic. There, she met a former construction worker named Larry Fortensky, who was at the clinic for alcoholism. They fell quickly in love, though Elizabeth was two decades Larry's senior. In 1991, the pair made things official, tying the knot at Michael Jackson's Neverland Ranch. Though they went on to divorce in 1996, they remained good friends until Elizabeth's death. After divorcing Larry, Elizabeth never remarried. Rod Steiger. After divorcing Larry Fortensky, Elizabeth hooked up with fellow actor Rod Steiger during the late 90s. Colin Farrell. Though he has claimed the two never made love, Elizabeth Taylor apparently struck up a romantic relationship with Irish heartthrob Colin Farrell from 1999 to 2001. Jason Winters. The last person Elizabeth Taylor was known to have been romantically involved with was Jason Winters. Jason is known as a public speaker and author, and the two apparently dated from 2007 until Elizabeth's 2011 death. Now it's time to hear from you. Which one of these hookups was most surprising to you? Let us know in the comments section below. And before you go, make sure you give this video a like and subscribe to Facts First if you haven't already. Click the bell icon to stay updated on all our latest content.